Singapore Dean for Center for Postgraduate and Research Studies at UKL. Uh, thank you for the opportunity given to me to share some thoughts and uh, information on literature review. I believe uh, everybody here, uh, we have uh, our top professors, we have our lecturers, our uh, students, and perhaps some external participants as well. Okay, uh, I hope my sharing would be beneficial to everybody in some ways. And uh, feel free to ask questions, yeah? Okay, uh, my background is, uh, I am from IUKL. I've been in with IUKL since 2007. And then uh, I've uh, graduated my uh, undergraduate studies from UITM. I did my master's and PhD uh, and get it from UPM. And then uh, since then I am, I do publish some papers. You can look uh, look up my name. And then uh, I do hope that uh, with uh, the information that I'm sharing can be uh, used by everybody to improve the quality of uh, research studies that you are doing. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me share you. Uh, let me share with everybody. I will be sharing the slides uh, right after this session because uh, from the uh, attendance, I believe we have the email address, yeah? So I'll be emailing to everybody the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation just in case if you would like to uh, refer to later on. Right. Uh, okay, so we have here, this is my slide. Uh, I don't know, maybe since uh, when I was doing my studies, I like to have my presentation as very, very plain. Luckily, our uh, IUK logo is very simple one as well, so I can just simply place it there. And then I like to have my presentation uh, background as white because it is easier for me to add on uh, the wordings, the uh, photos, the videos, and so on. So it is uh, easy for everybody to understand straight away. That is one of the uh, key points of doing a good presentation. Right, so uh, basically, literature review, it is uh, not uh, a summary of sources. Okay, It is not a grouping of broad or unrelated sources. And then it is not compilation of everything that has been written on particular topic. And it is not literature criticism or a book review. It is not a review. If it is a book review, then you write it as a review. So literature review is not all of this. What is it then? So basically, it is an integrated analysis. <clears throat> integrated analysis. This is the keyword. So it is not a summary of scholarly writings that are related directly to your research questions. Your research question. So this is why when you are doing, uh, at the beginning, when you are doing your proposal, it is very important that you have a very thorough literature review before you can have a good proposal. So it can be a standalone work or introduction to a larger research paper. It depends on the assignment or it depends on the purpose or the uh, end product of your literature review. So why is it important? It explains the background of the research on a topic. So this is why in our literature review section, if we are talking about a thesis, we must have introduction we must have uh, subtopics and then we must have a summary. Okay, so this is a good uh, way to present your literature review. And it also demonstrates why this topic are significant to subject area. Okay, subject area or the study area or the material or the uh, theories used and so on. It discovers the relationship between the research studies or ideas. It identifies major themes, concepts, and researchers on a topic, and it identifies critical gaps. From literature review, we are going to be able to find the gap of the research. So this is why we do a very thorough literature review. 
And literature review also discussed further research questions that logically came out from the previous studies. So from the previous studies, they have uh, some terms that uh, we call for future research or if there's anything that is missing, that is not achievable. So that those are the gaps that we want to fill in. So this is how we find out our research gap. First, you must choose a topic and define your research question. So I believe everybody here has already have your own topic be it the topic about your research paper or about your thesis or about your project paper. And then you already have your uh, research questions based on your objectives, right? Okay, so <clears throat> the literature review should be guided by a central research question. So this research question, again, it comes from your objective. Okay, remember, it is not a collection of loosely related studies in a field, but represents background and research development. This is the keyword that you want to look into. Related to a specific research question, interpreted and analyzed by you in a synthesized way. So, the tips here, make sure your research question is not too broad or too narrow. Is it manageable? So how to define whether it is too broad or too narrow? Again, it depends on your uh, title, the topic. So if it is a, a journal paper or a research paper, then you know how deep the uh, research has to be. If it is a thesis, if it is a master's level or if it is a PhD level, you know how it is deep it has to be. It depends on the uh, the one that you have discussed with your supervisors, whereby in general, if you are doing a PhD, it has to be a fundamental topic. New things that you want to find out. Yeah. All right. So, and then you have to begin writing down terms that are related to your questions. This will be useful for research later. So these terms, it can also be your keywords. Right, so it is not necessary to be, but it can lead to keywords or be your keywords, right? And then if you have the opportunity to discuss your topic with your professor or your supervisors, then it is good. You know which way you are heading to, which topic that you want to dig in. Okay. Right. Okay, first you have to decide the scope of your review, right? So the scope of your review, it is the same as the scope of your studies. Or if you are talking about a research paper, you always um, write as uh, the study focuses on. Uh, so scope means your focus. Your focus. It relates to your keywords. Okay, so these are the things that you can relate to one another. How many studies do you need to look at? How comprehensive should it be and how many years should it cover? All right, so how many studies should you look at? Again, this one depends on the level. All right, so for master's level, how many papers should you look at? Anybody got any idea? For masters by research. Fifteen. Sorry? Fifteen. Fifteen? Fifteen is not enough. Yeah, if we're talking about fifteen to twenty papers, that one in general is a journal paper. Okay, or a review paper for to submit to a journal or to for publication. All right. So if you are talking about master's level, perhaps about fifty or above. PhD level about 70 or above. All right. Because we are not going, we are not talk, talking about like uh, reviewing one paper, one page. We are not doing that. All right. Sometimes you are reviewing three to five papers in one paragraph only. So this is why the numbers are like that. All right. So in general, that is just a guideline. However, if you 
uh, refer and discuss with your research group and your supervisor especially. If they feel that your literature review is comprehensive enough, then it should be fine. Okay, that's the general idea of how many papers that you have to refer to. The more is better, but it, they have to be related to the keywords and stay focused into the scope of your studies. And how comprehensive should it be? Some papers that you want to review, perhaps you are looking into their theories. Some papers that you review, you are looking into their methods. Some are looking into the instrumental, for example, their equations, mathematical equations, or the equipment that they are using, and so on. Okay, how many years should it cover? Right, so in recent years, uh, it, it, they goes uh, all around uh, Malaysia uh, research uh, pattern. So nowadays, uh, we always cover the five years back. Okay, so five years back, if you are talking about from 2020 until 2016, so they should have more than 70%. For example, if you have 100 uh, references, 100 literature reviews, then 70 or more of them must come from this five years back. Unless it is a theory. Theory, it can be used from many, many years ago. That is the basic uh, understanding because theories are all being produced uh, based on uh, new findings. Yeah. And then tips. This may depend on your study and research. How many sources does the research require? Right. So, where do you get your literature reviews? You can select the databases that you want to use. Okay. Nowadays, everything is online, so you can go to the online databases. Uh, look uh, through the trusted uh, websites. Okay. Uh, in IUKL, we do have links to the uh, websites that are uh, we already purchased. Okay. The membership, and then you can download it, download the whole paper from there. Some papers, you don't need the whole papers. Then you can just use their abstracts as references. Okay? And then perhaps from the abstract, you can look for other abstract, for other resources, for other reference. So these databases will be categorized into subjects and disciplines. So you can uh, use other types of uh, platforms. For example, if you are looking into a theory, you have to go to the a specific library and look into their online um, previous thesis databases. To conduct your research uh, and find the literature, you have to keep track of your searches. Okay, how to keep track? We have so many online platforms or free softwares that you can download and you can use. Which uh, what time of uh, what type of references uh, software that you use? I used to use EndNote. Okay, nowadays we have so many uh, available uh, online. You can download and use it for free. Okay, so the keyword is here is that you want to keep the bibliographies and the references into one platform, so it's easier for you to keep track whichever that you have put into your paper or into your thesis, right? And then uh, whichever that uh, you don't use, then you can delete them later. Okay, so this also uh, is very useful when you are doing your editing and proofreading by the end of your uh, paper and thesis, yeah? So, Review the literature. What was the research question of the study you are reviewing? What were the authors trying to discover? So the one that is being stated in the papers are being reviewed by the authors. So you are looking into their research question, whether it is related to your research question or not. Was the research funded by source that could influence the findings? Uh, meaning to say that if the research is being based on some current issues that is funded by some company or some ministry, right? So what were the research methodologies? 
Analyze its literature review, the samples and variables used, the results and the conclusion. Does the research seem to be complete? Could it have been conducted more soundly? What further question does it raise? Right? So here can also lead to the gap. Right. So if there are conflicting studies, why do you think that is? How, the, how are the authors viewed in the field? Has this study been cited? If so, how, it has, how has it been analyzed? So if a study has been referred to or cited, how's the finding? Or if the finding was negative, how, were you, how are you going to use that same site to settle your problem, to answer your research question? Remember, the review the abstracts carefully. Abstract is everything. From abstract, you can know whether this paper or these sources you can cite or not, or is it related to your request or not. Full notes so that you may track your thoughts processes during the research process. So for this purpose, I like to use the uh, cloud method. Okay, uh, so it you know that which study related to what and does it answer or does it goes the other way. Okay, because literature review, it can be uh, positive or it goes parallel with your thoughts, with your uh, research question, but it also can go the opposite direction or negative way. Yeah, so research, literature review, it is not only the studies that supports you, but also how can you see not to use that method so that you can overcome your problem. So it goes negative way, yeah? Rules for writing literature review. Okay, some guideline of rules when you are writing or choosing a good literature review. Define a topic and audience, right? So you have a topic. This one, you will have your research questions. And then you have the audience. The audience, meaning to say that, are you writing a paper, a journal? Or are you writing a review paper? Are you writing a findings paper? Or are you writing a master's level thesis? PhD level thesis? Or are you writing a, just a normal dissertation? Just a, a, a simple small project, right? So interesting to you, ideally you should have come across a series of recent papers related to your line of work that call for critical summary. So this one, it is what we call a review paper. Okay. So review paper, meaning to say that you can agree or disagree with the literature that has been written before. Or uh, you can also call it for a source that you can bring forward to solve your problem. Right? An important aspect of the field so that many readers will be interested in the review and there will be enough material to write it. Right? And then, so here the keyword is the field, field of study, a well-defined issue. Otherwise, you could potentially include thousands of publications which would make the review unhelpful. So you cannot help have too many literature because if it is unhelpful or if it's nothing related to whatever that you are uh, researching, then it is not useful. You will end up a very thick chapter of literature review, but only 30% is related with your study, which is not good, okay? Search and research the literature, okay? It doesn't mean that once uh, you have found a series of papers that related to one topic, then it means that, oh, done, okay? Because when you are, you are, for example, uh, not, not to say finish writing the literature re review chapter, but once you move on to methodology, then you still have to go back and search for more literature that is related to your methodology. So you see, literature review is a, like a never-ending uh, activity that you have to do until you submit the thesis or the paper. Yeah? And uh, most, uh, most comments that I've got from uh, reviewers uh, in our IUKL research journal, they mentioned that, 
or please add on uh, three to five more literature in methodology section or in analysis section to support the result and so on. So you see, literature is not literature review is not only in the literature review section, but it goes all the way to the whole uh, topic, the whole thesis. Yeah. All right. So you have to keep track the search items. Here the things that you have searched and you have saved and you have used in your paper or your thesis. And then uh, you can use the paper management system. Here are some of the examples. They are free of charge, Mandalay or EndNote just now, and then papers, Pika, Sente, and so on. <coughs> okay, define the early in the process some criteria for exclusion of irrelevant papers. This criteria can then be described in the review to help to define the scope of the study. Okay. Do not look uh, for research papers in the area you wish to review, but also seek previous reviews. So, for example, my research area is uh, building comfort uh, model. Uh, so, I cannot really uh, look into building comfort model only. I have to look into building management. I have to look into building safety. I have to look into building material and so on. So you see, the sections are very wide, but you have to control. Okay, not too wide. You have to control. Yeah? Just get enough literature. Take notes while reading. Uh, so especially if you are a research student, uh, I really like to advise you to have like one notebook. It's special. For you to jot down everything and anything about your research okay not only while you are uh, doing your writing <clears throat> or while you are writing your formulas and so on but maybe when you were sitting down watching television some and suddenly some idea come up to you you can simply open that notebook and write down so later on when you switch on your laptop straight away you can find the keywords and look for the literature onto that uh, things that related to your study. So that notebook would be very, very helpful uh, within your study. And when you are finished, you will look back into that notebook and it will be very, very helpful. I believe this tip is given uh, to you by uh, your supervisors. Yeah? Never to lose the book. Right? You choose the type of review you wish to write. All right. So uh, after you have taken the notes while reading the literature and so on, you have to decide to go for a mini or a full review. Okay. So what's the difference mini and full review? Mini, you are using some parts of the paper. Okay. Full review, you are using the whole part of the paper, meaning from the theoretical concept until the methods, until the uh, equation use until the uh, analysis comparison and so on. That's a full review. Yeah. <coughs> All right. So uh, a mini review is not necessarily a minor review. It may well attract more attention from busy readers. All right. So although it is inevitably simply some issues, some small issues, yeah, and leave out some relevant material due to space limitation. So it is very focused. Mini review is very focused here. Okay, so you take one part or one or two parts of the uh, literature to be reviewed. Okay, and then the next one is to keep the review focused but make it of broad interest. While focus is an important feature of a successful review, this requirement has to be balanced with the need to make the review relevant to a broad audience, right? So when you are doing a review, you have to, not to say assuming that uh, your audience or the reader has no idea what you're doing, no, okay? But then you are targeting a broad background audience, okay? Just because uh, you are from a communication background, you cannot be thinking of you are targeting into a, communication audience only okay i've done some uh, series of papers with uh, my co-researchers who are from the forestry department all right because they are using 
my concept of theory, but they are applying into the forestry. They are applying the building comfort into the forestry comfort. The keyword here is comfort by my audience can be broadened. That's the that's one of the good example, yeah. <coughs> All right. The next one, be, be critical and consistent. Uh, so this is quite a tricky part to be critical. How to be critical, right? And how to be consistent. So when you are doing an under literature review topic, so you have a keyword. So from these keywords, you will do uh, topic number one, topic number two, number three, and if you have more than that, all right? So if topic number one, you are doing a review from, let's say, 10 sources. Okay, sorry about that. My writing pad is uh, like this. All right, so from 10 sources, for topic number two, you must also have about 10 sources. Topic number three, you must also have about 10 sources. You cannot be having topic one, three sources. Topic two, five sources. Topic three, suddenly 10 sources. Okay, because this will reflect on the importance of the keywords. Your keywords reflects your title, right? So you cannot be having un unbalanced. It has to be consistent. How critical it has to be depending on the depth of your research. All right, and then focus on the main areas of the debate. The main areas here. So if you have one, the main topic here and then you have subtopic 1.1 okay and then 2.1 3.1 so here you can divide the number of resources accordingly to make sure that you are being consistent because what we try to say here is that you must have a balance onto the keywords that you are looking into via literature review you cannot be focusing too much on topic one, okay? Or you cannot be having less importance on topic two, right? Because they are all equally important. Right, so the outstanding research question here, <clears throat> usually uh, for a PhD student, outstanding research question would be the fundamental part, which uh, usually it would be on uh, objective three, yeah? Because objective one, to analyze and then to determine and then to produce or to, uh, <clears throat> to uh, what do you call it? To um, uh, distinguish, uh, no, not distinguish, to produce, okay, uh, or to uh, enhance the formula, the mathematical formula for blah, 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 blah topic. Right, so you are doing something new, something fun fundamental. So it should be the third research question. So this third research question, it can be contributed from topic one, topic two, and topic three, because each and every one of these subtopics in literature review will help in determining the outstanding research question, which is the third question, uh, third uh, literature review usually. Yeah, sorry, third uh, objective. Okay, but I do know that some research, they have more than three uh, objectives. Okay, so you have to look into which objective that is the outstanding one. So you, it is not necessary that to focus onto that because the other objectives are supporting and help to make that particular objective as an outstanding. Yeah. All right, number seven, find a local structure, All right? So local structure, sorry, logical structure, meaning to say that <clears throat> if you are doing a study, okay, a study on blah, 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 focusing on this, this, this theory in Malaysia, and suddenly you are looking into your literature review from uh, United Kingdom or from... Uh, America or from Australia, they don't even have a, the same background information and so on. Unless you want to compare, you must have one similarity first. Yeah. So you cannot be simply saying that 
uh, I want to look for literature review from uh, non-Malaysian country, but not the same region, not having the same background. You must have one similar background, at least. Yeah. For example, I want to obtain the Building Comfort Index for buildings in Malaysia. So my literature review should look into at least the buildings in Indonesia, in Brunei, in Thailand with same climate at least yeah so if i want to do a study on oh the comparison of building comfort index between buildings in uh, tropical countries and the four season countries uh, then only i can take a literature from those countries that are having the four season uh, situation right so you must have a logical when you are looking into a literature review you cannot be simply, oh, we have the same topic, same wording, same uh, spelling. So I can use that paper. No. Yeah. So this is why you have to, again, read out and understand the abstract. Okay. Abstract is the key to the whole paper or the whole thesis. So it is important that you do that. Yeah. Okay. Make use of the feedback. Okay, so for example, the reviews of the literature are normally peer-reviewed in the same way as research paper and rightly so. As a rule, incorporating feedback from reviewers greatly helps improve a review draft. Right, so uh, for example, if you send uh, your paper for uh, proofreading, editing and so on, you have to ask the person back, uh, do you understand my paper? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Right? That is one of the way to get a good feedback, right? So if <clears throat> that person answers that, oh, you are trying to do this and this, okay, the keywords are in your objectives and so on, then you are on the right track, okay? And another way to look into that would be to read the feedback from your paper reviewers, okay? Every paper is being sent for publication will be read by the reviewers, expert reviewers, so if they say that, oh, no uh, critical uh, literature review has been done, okay, especially on the uh, mathematical equation part, right? So you have to go back to your paper and look into how critical that you have to improve, right? Do you add one or two more literature reviews in comparison, right? So how to see whether you are doing critically? Okay, we will see after this, yeah? There's uh, some slides that I want to share with you how to know that. Okay, include your own relevant research but be objective. Aha, uh -huh. this one for the uh, high-end researchers, okay, uh, they always cite their own paper. Okay, the reason is that, okay, for example, you they have uh, produced a new uh, improved theory on a topic. And then they want to apply that same theory onto a different study area or onto a different method. Yeah, so they cite their own uh, work and they see whether they achieve uh, the same objective by carrying it out with the same method or not. Do they have to improve and so on? Be objective. Okay, objective. This is very important. Right, so you cannot simply like, oh, I feel like I want to uh, try to test this uh, formula onto this item. Okay, you must have the reason why. You must know why. Then only you can, your own theory can be a good literature review. Okay, so uh, once you are done with one paper and then you want to carry on with another paper, you can cite the previous paper. You have the idea of how. Do you use your own literature to, in, to get uh, findings for a new research? Yeah, so I believe uh, this one, uh, every postgraduate students, you have to produce and uh, uh, submit and publish, uh, one submit and one publish papers, right? So I hope uh, you can do this when you submit uh, the first one and publish, and the second one, you will cite your own paper. So this one, uh, other than it can improve your uh, score in your uh, Google Scholar or other index, then it also can improve the skills of your citing 
uh, the literature review references. Okay, be up to date, but do not forget older studies. Yeah, so this one, uh, we refer back to the uh, information that I've shared with you. You must have at least 70% out of your references should be from five years back. Okay, however, do not miss the old theories <clears throat> that you must refer to, yeah, where necessary. Not necessarily all studies that you have to refer to the older ones, but where necessary, but be up to date. Okay, uh, don't be like, uh, for example, I want to submit my thesis this year, 2020, and suddenly I have a cited paper on 2021. Uh, so that one is a little bit confused, yeah, for the reviewer. Okay, so make sure that uh, new papers are being cited, okay, but must be related, and also do not forget the older studies. Okay, so this is my favorite part of uh, literature review, which really helps me in uh, doing a good and critical literature review, which is we call discourse markers. I believe uh, the um, you actually you. are uh, trying to explain something or you are defending something okay basically um, discourse markers is a word or phrase whose function is to organize discourse into segments for example well or i mean okay so <clears throat> where do you put these markers okay they are about uh, eight or more categories of discourse markers okay uh, for example addition um, a study by a stated that the formula is useful furthermore it is being supported by studies by b you see how to do addition means that you are um, adding the strengthen of the literature review statement Right, okay, and then if you do comparison, okay, for example, like oh, um, uh, study by A is uh, obtaining a higher uh, yield, a higher uh, results, higher number of results in comparison to a study by B. You are comparing, okay, and then you have words for contrast, for time for result, for summary, example, place, and so on. So you can see that you put these words perhaps in the beginning of the sentence or in between sentences or to support or to uh, argue the statement by another person. Okay? Okay, so... Um, other than that, you have adding, whereby you additional supporting information to a claim, okay, or sequencing means that you want to show a sequence. For example, a study by A obtained 5%, uh, followed by study by B that has 3% only, which is lower. Uh, you see the wordings? Okay, how you arrange the words, yeah? And then illustrating, how do you explain, okay? the building looks slant to the right such as the pisa tower okay so this discourse markers really help in order for you to explain your sentence in order for you to explain the literature that you have captured from the previous studies into explaining your studies right and then you also have cause and effect you have comparison, you have qualifying, you have contrasting, you have emphasizing. Yeah. So these are the things that will improve your thesis and to make it uh, your to make your paper or your thesis as academic writing. Yeah. Other than using all the fancy and very hard words to even remember. You have to use all of this. 
Okay, you cannot be too straightforward. No. Okay, you must be able to explain with these course markers. Okay, same as when you are talking. You cannot be simply, I cannot, for example, me, myself, I cannot be saying that, hi, I, Dr. Alia. Mm. I cannot be saying like that. Okay, I have to say, hi, my name is Dr. Alia. Actually, uh, I am from uh, Faculty of Engineering in IUKL. Uh, so usually in my free time, I like to watch TV, something like that. Yeah, all right. So all the discourse markers in between the sentence really help in uh, you delivering a good literature review. So why literature review? In writing the literature review, the purpose is to convey to the reader what knowledge and ideas have been established on a topic and what their strengths and weaknesses are. The literature review must be defined by a guiding concept <clears throat> whereby it has to come from your research objective, the problem or issue you are discussing, or your argumentative thesis. It is not just a descriptive list of the material available or a set of summaries. Yeah? If it is a set of summaries, then you don't have summary for your paper anymore. All right? So it is not that. Okay, for example, okay, for example, here, if you can see here, according to Castro, Woodin, Lundgren, and Byram, 2016, okay, comma, internationalization related to mobility is high on the agenda of higher education institutions across the world. So, where is your discourse markers? Here. Okay. So the rest of it, this internalization related to mobility is high on the agenda of higher education institution across the world. These are all rephrasing or paraphrasing from the wordings that is being written on the original paper. Okay, so you have to rephrase or paraphrase. Then only you can write it down here like this. Previous research. Uh, this is also discourse markers. On national local policies surrounding the phenomenon has identified identified different discourses of internalization which may have an effect on practices such as student mobility. All right, and then another another uh, literature. All right, so growth in the internalization or mobility of higher education is driving the expansion of the tertiary system and institution throughout the world. Okay. And then it also articulates cross-border collaboration as well as unsatisfying student mobility. Okay, in bracket, you see here, one reference. Here is one reference, Daniel Kanwa and Uvali, one. Moore and Henrik, two. How, three. Okay, does this mean all of them are saying this? No, but... All of them are having the same understanding as this sentence. Okay, so this is how you understand on how to take literature review. It is not necessary to be one source of literature, one paragraph. One source of literature, one paragraph. No, you can combine and you can also compare. Right? Okay, so here are the one in red. Is the other uh, discourse markers? Another study by Sandu and Asrabadi, 1994, found that one to eight international students enrolled in 10 regions of US worried most about perceived discrimination here. And then Sakamoto agreed with Sindhu Asrabadi. Ah, so you see, one literature. Okay, this is a new literature. Sindhu is the same one. Agreed. And added. Okay, so this is how you do critical. They agree, and in addition to that, okay, and then uh, Sakamoto, okay, still the same place, study, try to investigate the greatness. Means this is a new, new study, new things that they want to do. So this new thing, it reflects 
to the objective of Sakamoto. Okay, because they are trying to find a new thing. So from literature, you can see that, oh, you can read their objective. You can read their research question. You can read their method from literature. Okay, so if you feel that when you read an abstract of a paper or reference, and you feel that hmm, the information that I'm looking for is not enough, then you go through the paper. Okay, read one part by one part. Introduction part, literature review part, methodology part, analysis part, and result part. Okay, or you can straight away go to conclusion, look at their uh, gap, and then from the gap, you can find what's the new thing that they find out. Because from the gap, sometimes you can see that, oh, uh, the <coughs> uh, study conducted failed by using the new method. So you can go straight away to the methodology and look into the methodology part. That is the gap. Yeah. All right. So another paper here. Zhao say that, that the model used in study is to stimulate different types of commercial building. Okay. Hence, the model is to derive blah, 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 blah. These are all the wordings from this paper. Okay. And then another paper, Halfgard, Paulson, Madsen, and Jorgensen. This is paper number two. Agreed with Zhao. Okay, agreed with Zhao. And then, although Halfgard focus on economical model for building control, hence the model used was for the benefit of the environment. So this is the conclusion from this argument. Okay, so Zhao has a model. Zhao, uh, Hafgat agreed with Zhao's model, but Hafgat's model only benefit for the environment. See, you can do a critical wordings in literature. Okay, so this is how you show that the relationship of the literature that you are doing reflects to your study. Okay. Okay, other example. Okay. Uh, after that, order Wartel, 2010, further added. Okay, further added that the benefits of, of SMPC are tenability in a very easy way with a single tuning parameter, blah, blah, blah. The study has not stopped. Uh, okay, since later, order Wartel, another study. So here, one study, two study. Okay, further investigate the use of MPC, blah, blah, blah. Other findings that related to the study were based on energy efficiency. So you can take that anything that is under energy efficiency paper, but related to the SMPC topic, okay, written by Lam et al. As, as coined at uh, 2009, Yang et al. 3, Lam. Four, Sekisan, five. So you cite five papers into one sentence only. Okay, so this is why PhD needs to have more than 70, Masters needs to have more than 50, and uh, papers are usually uh, 15 to 20 or more. For undergraduate, it is good if you have 30 or more. Yeah. So this is how uh, it is shown that even though the numbers are so vary, but it shows that you do a thorough literature review. Yeah? Okay. That is the end of my sharing session. Okay. So I hope I, I'm not too, uh, I'm not bought you with too much um, writing or too many like uh, information and so on. But I hope you have the general idea how to improve your literature review. Yeah? Okay, uh, let me see the chat box. Hmm. Okay, any question if you want to ask? Can I ask you? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Can you make it louder, please? Uh, doctor. Yeah. Uh, from your lecture, so can I conclude that uh, the best way to do uh the upper 
literature review for PhD is, uh, is first you must uh, it must be guided by your research question. Is it? Uh, yes, because actually when we work our way back, research question will come from objective. Objective will come from your title. Yes. Uh, your title will come from your literature review. So yes. it goes like that. Uh, it goes all around, on and on like that. So uh, you do a basic literature review to get a title. From title, you get your objective. From objective, you have your research question. From research question, you have your keywords. Mm -hmm. From your keywords, then you can do a thorough literature review. I love the idea because before this, uh -huh. Actually, how, how can I do a literature review when it's too right? <laughs> information to uh, review? Uh, uh, correct, because when you are referring to your research question, then your literature review will be more focused. Yes. Uh, yes. You are not going everywhere. Uh, you yes. will be more focused. Yes, I love that. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you for the question. Okay. Please use Namaste. the discourse marker here. Yeah? Namaste, this is from Nepal, Achyut, Nepal. My name is Hi, Achyut, Namaste. Nepal. Yes, uh, please, your question. Yes, uh, Dr. Alia, I have a, a small uh, a small concern regarding the, uh, I mean, a cut of date, you know, you mentioned about the time of literature, uh, the block of uh, years to cover in the literature review. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would like to reassure in my particular case, I think I have started the study in 2000, 2016. Okay. And uh, it is uh, 2020, and I believe that I am nearing to completion. And uh, when starting, I have uh, covered, let me say, 10, 2010 or 2011 literature. Mm. So, uh, could you please suggest uh, the cut of date, uh, cut of year, you know, uh, from what I would like to, I, I have to, to cover, the, to review the, my literature? Okay. My okay, Mr. Achyu. Uh, actually, uh, I cannot really say what is the cut-off date because okay, okay. Uh, if your research is related to uh, theories, theories, they have many, many years back. Okay, okay. they are coming yeah. from many, many years back. So I cannot say yeah. that, okay, you have to cut off at 2000, year 2000. Okay. No, I cannot say that, yeah. yeah? So this oh. is why I am suggesting that you should have at least 70% from the past five years uh, reference. Okay, at least 70% means that 30% can come from any time before that. Okay, so that uh, let's say you start from 2016, now is 2020. So the one that you have cited before, you have to renew or update. Okay. Uh, renew or update because I believe uh, the same paper, this, uh, maybe the same group of researcher or all around it, they already have the improved result. Okay. So you can take the improved one. Uh, so okay. you have to update and renew. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we can understand there is there is no cut of uh, date like things. Yeah. No. But it no, depends. Okay. Yeah, okay. It depends on your okay. Uh, okay. research because if you are talking okay. about theory, I cannot, you know, I cannot say that oh Einstein is invalid already. I cannot say that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so this is why we 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 sh we try to have the minimum seventy percent. Okay. Because uh, why why I'm suggesting this? It, it is because okay. nowadays uh, students who are producing their own masters and PhD thesis, they mm -hmm. are re they have to produce a research paper or a journal paper to be published. Yeah, when you publish, it is published worldwide. So this is the rule of the worldwide publication. So we are trying to stay on to the line so that we are not following behind on to publication uh, guideline. Yeah. Okay. And my second question is your the the, the journal uh, for which you are chief editor published uh, only engineering research paper or business research paper as well. Uh, my background is uh, geomatic engineering, so I have published in the geomatic, civil engineering, uh, communication, and language as well. Okay. No, my question is about the journal. You know, uh -huh. uh, which, the the journal published from the IUKL. Uh -huh. You are the chief editor, yeah. publishes journal in engineering faculty or other faculty as well. My so, question is that. Uh, for the recent publication, we have two. We have social science, which composed of education, business, and so on. 
and then we have science and technology which compose of engineering and mathematics and others uh, so we have two types but for 2020 we are holding on uh, for a while we are waiting for the instruction from the top management on to the okay. whether we are continuing uh, to these two or we are renaming the journal and so on yeah okay okay thank you thank you thank you dr Okay, I have a question from the uh, here from the chat box. This slide can be shared. Uh, yes, uh, Liu Fu Hai, I will share this slide uh, according to the email address that you have entered in your attendance. Yeah, and then uh, Zhu Yongjin, uh, what are the suggested pages number for PhD and Master? Ooh. this one it depends on your um, the university guidelines. University thesis guideline, yeah, because uh, if um, I'm not sure about uh, social science, but for science tech, um, I have a, I have my one of my lecturers. He did his uh, PhD with uh, 37 pages only, so it is acceptable because he explained all the formulas and so on. For my case, I had only for 170 pages. Uh, and then my uh, research fellow, he got like 250 pages. So I cannot really say it depends on your university guideline. Yeah? For IUKL research guideline, I believe uh, Dr. Nozita uh, can share that later on with everybody together with your supervisor can help you with that. Yeah? Um, okay. Refer uh, Zhao Jing, referring to the last page of your PowerPoint, the word add, focus, agree. Uh, of present tense can be used past simple tense in literature review. For example, as I asserted that, found that as often seen in journals. Yes, uh, you have to, uh, you can use uh, this past simple tense as well. Yeah, the how you write down the literature, how you comment or how you rewrite or rephrase the wordings. Okay. Um, Okay. Mahendra, PhD scholar of IUKL from Nepal. Oh, hi. How's Everest doing today? I hope okay. Yeah. And then uh, thank you very much, doctor, for your kind sharing. It helped me a lot. Just starting my study. Currently doing your research proposal. Okay, so do a good uh, literature review. Perhaps you take from uh, 10 to 20 papers and then have a good uh, research proposal Yeah, and discuss with your supervisor. Okay. Uh, any question? Uh, maybe while waiting for some questions from the yes. from the students, yes. uh, 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 I want to just highlight a few things. Uh, uh, what uh, first of all, what uh, an informative and very 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 useful uh, presentation with uh, uh, Alia. Uh, I hope the students. Uh, have uh, taken note of most of the, if not all of the information we have been sharing uh, just now. I just want to uh, re-emphasize the importance of the discourse uh, markers. Uh, I have written in the in the chat play that to the students and everyone else that that is gold. That is the 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 the, the, the whole. Uh, guideline to how we should present our literature review in the most acceptable and the, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the most formative, uh, formal and acceptable uh, way. Um, the information you have given on the uh, discourse markers is extremely important. And I would uh, want to emphasize to everyone who is doing their research right now that uh, uh, you have to download those markers and put them there. If if you go into my uh, my reading room at my house, I have charts of all those discourse markers, uh, so that when I am writing my review, uh, um, I have to refer to that uh, when I am doing some comparisons, uh, when I am doing some argumentative uh, uh, argumentative writing or something like that. Uh, I have to use those uh, those uh, those, uh, those markers. Uh. Thank you so much for for that. The other thing which um, I also want to agree and emphasize so much uh, is the use of uh, research notebooks. 
uh, most of our students, uh, our masters by research and our PhD by research students, we have a, 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 a logbook. But uh, we, we are misusing the logbook. Huh? We are using it for uh, as an attendance register. No, it is not an attendance register. I want to give you an example. Huh? Uh, when uh, doctor was, uh, uh, was, was sharing just now, I went in and I took out my, this is my, my logbook. Huh? And if you can see what is written there, it is volume number three of my, my research. This is a book uh, I refer to until today. I never go back to my written thesis. No, I don't do that. I go back because here is all the thoughts which made me come up with my thesis, which guided me throughout my research. All the findings, if you open on uh, any one of the, the, the pages here, the calculations, uh, the formulas, uh, the readings I was doing on the bus, uh, or uh, at the R and R while I'm waiting for the bus to move or where I'm driving or whatever, all the information is in here. And it has got the dates and it has got all the references and everything. Because what is in your logbook is something which you read yourself, which you write yourself, which you see yourself, and uh, you are using all the senses, uh, all your senses. Huh? It stays more, uh, it stays in your, your head more than what you write in your thesis. Um, whatever I have done for my for my PhD and all the work I am writing, uh, I want to publish or whatever, I have to use the, uh, uh, in a UKL, we call it the logbook. Mm -hmm. um, where I started, uh, we used to call it the invention, the invention, uh, invention book. Every student, every PhD student, every master student, if you are doing research, you need to have this. I have seen uh, most of my dear professors, uh, Prof. Arida, uh, 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 prof, no. Uh, whenever they, whenever they go, they have a notebook. Whatever you do, they do. They have a notebook to jot down things because some of the thoughts they are impromptu thoughts. They come in and they disappear very fast. If you do not capture them in the nick of the moment, they, they will just disappear. And we, believe me, you try by all means to remember. You will not catch it. But if you note it down. You might not need even to refer to it because you've written it down. It will stick to your uh, uh, to your to your mind. Huh? So those are the two very important uh, things I need to comment um, uh, to comment on. And then also to add to this, the actual Nepal's question, uh, it was in Nepal's question on when the the, 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 the the references. I am from IT. The guideline of when is yeah, I mean, the, the, the date for your references is not guided by when you start your research. Because if you guide by when you start your research uh, and you finish your research five years, six, seven, eight, ten years later, it might be obsolete. The guideline is when you submit your research. Are your references still relevant or not? So it's all about relevance. And in IT, because it is very dynamic, and also in engineering, I believe it is as dynamic as it is in IT, we have to stick to the golden rule, four years. That's what we have to do. 70%, yes, that's the international uh, uh, accepted uh, uh, number of uh, relevant sources uh, for in, your, in, your, in your references. But for my students, I always say 80% just to be on the safe side, because um, it is a, a extremely critical to show that your research is still relevant. If you start your studies in 2015 and you defend your, 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 your thesis in 2022, um, you cannot argue that when I started, these references were still uh, relevant. No, it is according to the day you are going to defend your thesis, the day you are going to defend your, uh, your, your, your work. So uh, that one is uh, also, uh, I think, extremely important. Now I have two questions for Dr. Ayer. Mm -hmm. um, most of our students, I get very distressed 
when we are evaluating our students' work, we ask them to show their Gantt chart or mm. their, uh, uh, that is the study plan of all their, their work, which projects what they are going to do, what are the milestones they are going to reach and whatever, so that we can measure uh, and we can see whether there is progress or not, so that we can rectify and correct and push and, and pull uh, uh, the, 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 the research work. What uh, bothers me most is when it comes to the timeline which is given by the students on the Gantt chart, when it comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, literature review. Most of them, they just highlight literature review for the first semester and part of the second semester. After that, they are just saying that I am writing, I am doing this and that, this and that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, is that the correct thing to do? Because from uh, the, the, the way you, you, you have given us this talk, literature review just starts. It does not have an end an end that. So um, is it correct for the students or for the researchers to really stipulate that I'm going to do my literature review from this date to this date? Uh, they always give the argument that I have passed my second semester, so I'm not going to look at the literature review. That is the first, uh, uh, the first question. Huh? And then the second question is, how much do you emphasize the importance of literature review towards attainment of a research degree, maybe a master's by research or a PhD by research? Because some cases I have seen some students getting major correction, mm. one year correction, mm. for the simple reason that the examiner said that uh, not enough literature uh, review. Mm. I have also witnessed a few cases where some students have been failed that there is no critical analysis of the problem supported by a weightful uh, uh, literature review. So my question is, what is the overall importance uh, of literature review towards the attainment of uh, of uh, uh, a research degree. Is it just there because we have a literature review chapter, or it has been commonly practiced that everyone has to do literature review, or it is the heart and the, 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 the main important part of uh, literature review, or does it really uh, necessarily contribute towards your attainment? Is it more important than your 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 your, your, your results or whatever? Uh, when it comes to literature review. Uh, if you can uh, help us from your uh, experience to just identify how much important the literature review uh, is. Okay, that's all I have for you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Alicia. Uh, basically, I do agree with you on to the notebook as well. Yeah. So better to for the students uh, to uh, keep one particular notebook and use your logbook, not only for attendance, yeah? especially for UKS students, remember that. Okay, so uh, I think I will answer your second question first. To what degree of the attainment, yeah? Okay, so um, I think the hardest part would be um, as, as uh, we're becoming the reviewers or the examiners for thesis or for research papers, we are coming from different school of thoughts, yeah? Uh, like me, I'm, I was trained by research university. So my research thought is like this. And then Dr. Risha from somewhere else, Dr. Juliana from somewhere else, Prof. Farida and uh, Prof. Maziha from uh, well-distinguished experience and coming from research university as well and so on. We are actually not expecting the students to, to achieve what they should have. Okay, So the depth of the uh, research for masters uh, in differentiate to PhD, it should be the basic uh, achievement on how the students have to achieve in order to get that master level or PhD level. For me myself, um, I think my 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 understanding and from what I've been taught is that if uh, a person were to achieve a PhD, he or she must uh, produce a fundamental research. Okay, something new. Okay, not to say that oh uh, I am producing a new formula. No, you are developing a new formula based on someone else's formula. Yes, that is PhD. Okay, so uh, 
in comparison to master's level, it is more towards like um, uh, applying, okay, applying what is the gap of research that was found from the previous literature. You see, we are going back to the literature. So the literature review, if you are doing a very thorough and good enough literature review, you are going to be able to find a gap. Okay, so let's say in one topic, there are many gaps. So you want to focus on one gap only. So you can do that. So you do a thorough literature review onto that gap of research. So the depth should be the level of achievement. Do you want to be onto a master level or do you want to be onto a PhD level? So that's usually what I advise the students. And um, uh, actually, when I, I'm trying to define the depth of the study, uh, I'm trying to define what is the level of the study that the student has to achieve. For example, I have a master by research student. So my target for the student is to submit the thesis within one year. Okay, so I'm targeting the research can be done within one year. Okay, for my PhD student, I'm targeting my student to finish within two and a half years. So by two and a half, so the study, it should be as hard as two and a half years study. So this is how me on the supervisor side, and I'm thinking of the depth on the student side. Okay, but holding on to the concept of PhD, you must found a fundamental result. You cannot be answering question, research question, something like, I want to differentiate between A and B anymore. You are trying to differentiate uh, what happens if A plus B, C plus D, am I going to get E? That is PhD. Okay, so that is how depth. So on to the uh, length of correction that is being given to the students and so on, I believe that one is coming from different school of thoughts, but at the end of the day, we do agree on the level of difficulty of the student uh, achievement, yeah, from PhD or uh, literature review, uh, sorry, uh, master level. Okay, on to the uh, literature review. Uh, Dr. Lisha, can, can you uh, say again what was your, the, the first question just now? Uh, okay, I was saying that uh, uh, most of the time, or the uh, gun chart, right? The, the gun yeah, chart. yeah, yeah, the gun chart. Okay, yes. so I always tell my students, the literature review, they have to expand from first semester until the last semester. Okay, the reason is that after the literature review chapter, you are going into methodology chapter, right? Okay, so all students, are you developing your own method? No, you are referring to a previous method. When you are referring or citing from a previous method, that is also literature review. So you should lengthen the literature review. So the literature review should be all the way. Yeah. So if let's say you don't want to put into your gun chart, but still you have to do it. But if your supervisor asks you why you are not putting in your gun chart, means you are creating your own method, then it is all on you, which is wrong. Okay, so it is much better if you put the literature review part into that uh, from the first semester until the last semester. Even until the conclusion, you still have to cite that, oh, the findings or the conclusion of my study is parallel to a study conducted by who and who in the year 2018. However, it is uh, the opposite of the study uh, and this leads to a future study uh, that can be developed in this and this section. Yeah. So you see, you are doing literature review critically from starting until the end of your study. Okay. Because your study has to be based on something, and this is how you improve and create a new study. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope I answer your question. I have to answer some of this question. Um, Okay, um, Andy Lama asks, while stating hypothesis, is it mandatory to have references of the past studies or hypothesis can simply be stated? Okay, hypothesis, it has to come from a past study. As H0, then only you can have H1. What is your proposed uh, hypothesis? Yeah, then only you can calculate that. What is the difference in between the H0 and H1 or H2 if you have any more? 
Okay. And then um, Mahendra is asking how many papers are mandatory to be published for PhD degree under IUKL. Okay. Uh, Dr. Zita, uh, can you help me on this one, please? Yes. Okay, for PhD students, uh, you are required to have two publications. Two publications here refers to, yeah, by the time you submit your thesis for examination, okay, uh, you should have one uh, published paper and one at least accepted paper. Okay, so paper here refers to journal paper, all right, or a paper to any international conference, yeah. If you are too uh, limited of your opportunities and whatnot, you can always write to us because we do have IUKL Research Journal for which Dr. Alia is the uh, chief editor. All right, so for PhD, two papers, one published, one at least accepted. Yeah, and the proof of publication has got to be submitted together with your thesis. Yeah, when you submit for examination, not submit for final submission. Yeah, for examination, the first round of your Viva Voce. Okay, for master students by research, structure A, Master of Civil Engineering, uh, Master of Electronics Engineering, and Master of Science in Built Environment, uh, one publication. Yeah, one publication. All right. For other master's programs, yeah, uh, structure B and structure C, MBA, yeah, uh, water resources, MAT SOL, communication, yeah, um, uh, MIT, these programs do not require any publication. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Zita, for a very uh, thorough explanation. So I hope all students take note on that, yeah. Uh, all right, so. Uh, for the purpose of, uh, from Abu Muhammadin, for the purpose of literature review writing, what are the most important sections to be read and captured from articles or books? Okay, so again, uh, first you can uh, get highlights from title, okay, uh, onto whether it is related to your keywords or not. From the title, you look through and go through and understand the abstract. Okay, because within abstract, usually they have written what are the focus uh, or focuses of the study, what are the objectives, and then what are the methods used, and what are the conclusion, okay, or the findings and conclusion, okay. But if you are not satisfied with the information that you get from the abstract, you can go to conclusion, okay. Still not satisfied, then you have to go to every chapter. However, if you are looking into, for example, methodology only, so you can straight away go to the methodology section and look through the research conceptual. And then you look into the formulas that they are using. You look into the theories that they are referring to. Yeah, so you can look one by one, yeah? And then, uh, okay, I hope answer that question. I would like to ask one question. I read one research paper and that paper. And I read uh, one research paper and that paper cited other paper which almost information I can get from the paper I read. So I just need to cite only one paper I read or should I include all other papers that the research has cited? Okay, so you, uh, Gareth, yes, sir. So what you can do is that you look into the sentence, yeah? If the sentence, including the cited uh, references, so you have to include the references, but if the sentence doesn't include anybody's name, means that's the author's name. So you just write down the author's or the paper author's name only, okay? You don't need to cite any other names, okay? Citing also has, requires uh, skills, yeah? Uh, so I believe this one, um, uh, when you entered Prof. Farida, uh, research methodology class, I believe uh, she has uh, give a very thorough information on this. So if you still feel that you need help, then you can contact your supervisor or uh, your HOPP, or you can also email to me. Yeah, I can help you whenever I, whenever, whichever way that I can. Okay, uh, Ms. Nalina as is asking, hi, Dr. Alia, what should we do if the research topic that we choose is something new? and not many literature reviews are available, is it possible to use literature that are close by to what we are researching or will it be seen as not relevant? Okay, uh, when you want to uh, do a new research topic, 
which are not widely uh, being researched. So you have to uh, find a gap first. Why do you want to do this research? Is it that if there is a need to do this research, then of course there will be uh, information available for you to cite. Yeah. So you have to look into the need of this research to be conducted because not everything can be research. Okay. Uh, and not everything you can research, right? So I believe you can uh, look into the need and then look into the research gap from the past uh, literature review. But um, nowadays, everything is online. So once you Google, key in, key in the keywords into Google, you can get so many information onto that. that or not, if it is not straight away, you can get the related information. So I believe... Um, there should be no problem yeah, into getting this information. It was not like 20 years ago whereby we have to like manually go to the library, find the manual, the hard copy journal, flip one by one, photo stat and so on. Yeah, Nowadays, everything is online. Even the, the journal that is uh, for, what you call it? That is available on uh, purchase purposes. Also, you can, you know, buy it for a very cheap price. Yeah. So uh, everything is there. Okay, I hope uh, you can uh, get what you need. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you, Miss Nadina. Uh, yeah. Any other question? Maybe I can take uh, maybe one or two last question. Uh, sorry, uh, before uh, anyone is asking question, I would like to remind the participants to fill out the attendance list because we need to capture your email address for us to send uh, the materials yeah, of the of this session. Yeah. So, so far we have got only 50 participants filling out the form, all right, and uh, we actually have more than 70 participants, all right, so please fill out the uh, attendance list for our record purposes, all right. Uh, I think someone was asking questions just now. Please proceed, yeah? All right, thank you. This is Bal from Kathmandu, Nepal. Yes, Mr. Bal. Uh, I have, uh, I would like to thank you very much. It is very much helpful uh, for me. Oh, thank uh, I'm you. also a student. I started in 2017. Uh, shifted, to, uh, shifted to education to uh, faculty of uh, business administration. Uh, my topic was uh, the integration of Muslim community in the education system, the case studies of managing mother size schools. According to uh, your um, opinion all uh, which you have a given the idea is very much related to my study uh, but uh, for the phd students you explain that uh, 70 articles are needed but uh, i have gone through a uh, study of khalida norm norma khalida uh, in Indonesia, she has done only uh, 17 or 18 studies. Uh, according to uh, my study, I have studies, I have added as much as I can find out related to my study, uh, whether it is uh, applicable that if it is more, uh, less than 70, that it will work on. Okay, Mr. Bob, I think uh, in regards to the number of references that you should get, uh, I believe uh, if you widen a little bit your uh, literature review focus, okay, you are not only focusing on the education part and also not on the Asia part. Okay, maybe you can have the same concept, still education concept, but you are looking into other parts of uh, the world region that is having the same uh, concept or study. For example, Australia and New Zealand, I think 
we have the same concept of education and uh, together with united kingdom and from there you can have more than uh, whatever that you have found so far yeah and also the second question is that i'm uh, uh, comparing with the formal education to the integration of the uh, other side schools mm. and the khalida uh, norma khalida also compared with the mahad and other side uh, it is similar to me Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm asking this. So if you are comparing the education system, again, I think you can uh, find out other uh, countries that are using the same concept of study comparison. So you have the similarity, one similarity at least. For example, the uh, concept of comparison of the uh, style of the study, and then you compare with other studies from other regions. So I believe that will be helpful and it will increase the number of references that you can cite. Yeah? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the question. Yeah, I have some question in the chat box. Um, how old the literature are uh, referred for PhD? Uh, so here, I would like to quote again what Dr. Lisha said. You have to refer to when you are graduating so you refer to five years back from the year that you are planning to graduate or you should graduate. And then um, it has to be at least 70%. Yeah. So 70% uh, from it, uh, five years back. And uh, you, I believe you can find easily nowadays. Uh, not to worry. Yeah. As long as you know what to find and where to find. Okay. So how old, it doesn't matter. Uh, if it is a theory, okay, educational theory, conceptual theory, communication theory, mathematical building climate theory, all theories, no problem. But of course, from the theory, they have developed some new improved application theory. So you have to put both, yeah, original theory and the new uh, improved theory. Okay, and then uh, from Ali, Writing of literature will remain same regardless of adopt the qualitative or quantitative. Okay, okay. So, uh, how to write literature review is the same, but how you explain the methodology is slightly different for qualitative and quantitative method. So, this one I will explain more in two weeks time. Yeah, I hope you can join that session for uh, focusing on to the research methodology. So how do you capture a uh, good uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, research method and how to put it into words and how to relate with your literature? Yeah. Um, okay, uh, Mahendra, can you give some suggestion on how to make citations in the text and at the same time organize in the bibliography? Ooh, this one, what I always told my students, always have side by side, okay, your thesis, and then uh, your uh, paper citation, and your bibliography, all three at the same time. Whenever, whatever you put into your thesis, straight away put into your bibliography, and then you must cite or screenshot the uh, journal. So from there, it is easier for you to look back or trace back if you are missing one of them. Yeah, so put all three at the same time, your thesis, your paper that you want to cite, and your bibliography. Whatever that you have written in the thesis, straight away copy into your bibliography. Right, uh, Dr. Alia, if I may uh -huh. share uh, yes, one sir. information here. Right, uh, we are going to have a talk by Dr. Gunush, who is mm. going to do uh, Mendeley. Ah, yes, reference yes, system. Yes. Mahindra, this is uh, in response to your question. Uh, in the middle of the semester, we're going to have one talk uh, or one session with Dr. Gunus. She is going to share on using Mendeley as a reference uh, manager system. Okay, so you can have the citation in text citation. And you can also have the list of uh, references at the back of your thesis. All right, so don't forget all these talks. Dr. Alia is going to be with us again in two weeks' time to talk about methodology because I think Ali has asked a question just now, yeah, on, on a little bit of methodology there. 
and we're going to have one talk. Yeah, we have not really decided on the date, but it's going to be uh, in the middle of the semester using Mendeley as a reference manager system. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, please do join us and we will keep all of you updated because all these um, series of talks are meant to help to support your research um, endeavor. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Alia. Back to you. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe um, one last question, if any. Okay, uh, if not, then uh, maybe I can uh, I can advise something to all uh, these um, postgraduate students, especially uh, all my fellow uh, lecturers uh, who are pursuing PhD or currently actively writing research papers. Uh, what I can say is that um, research, uh, master by research or PhD, especially PhD, is a very, very uh, tedious work. Okay, but uh, it teaches you a lot. Yeah, it teaches you a lot. And then I hope, uh, number one, do not give up. Okay, and then uh, number two, keep organized. Okay, keep organized. No matter how long it takes you to finish, it doesn't matter. Okay, as long as you are on track and you finish. That is all. Yeah, even though some people say that, oh, it's only a piece of paper. Yeah, but, you know, education is something that people cannot take away from you. So, you know, even money people can take away from you. So, uh, education is uh, things that people cannot take away from you. It is something that it is yours forever. So, cherish it. Enjoy the journey. And then, if you need help, your supervisors are always available for you. Please seek help. Do not just uh, sit at the corner and then be quiet, cry to yourself and whatever. Okay, don't be like that. We are all adults now, yeah? Seek for a uh, solution, okay? So, uh go and get help from your supervisor or if your supervisor are not available go and see Dr. Nazita or go and see your head of programs okay and then maybe refer to your friends okay don't don't do uh don't don't be alone yeah okay uh so good luck and I really want to see everybody uh getting all your scrolls later on yeah so uh I will see you in two weeks inshallah yeah, thank you so much to yes, IUPL, CPSR, for uh, giving me the opportunity to share this topic with everybody. I hope uh, it's been uh, good sharing. If not, uh, then I'm so sorry if there's any mistakes that I've done. Uh, anything, you can uh, always contact me on my mobile phone or on my email. Yeah, I will share the uh, PowerPoint presentation with everyone right after this. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zita. Thank you, Dr. Alia. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Alia. I think that's that's a very insightful and a very interesting talk, actually. Yeah? I think um, a lot of aspects of literature review um, were put in practice. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to learn as well myself. Yeah. And uh, with that, yeah, uh, I hope the students here uh, have learned as much. All right. And um, we're going to meet again in two weeks time. All right. For methodology. So if you're available, please, please do come and join us. Now, these um, list of activities that we have are not just meant to help support you academically, but also to provide you the social support that you need yeah especially for those uh, students by research yeah you need all the support system the social support system as well sometimes like Dr. Alia has mentioned it feels a little lonely all right it's a little difficult but when you see there are other people in the group yeah your friends are here your lecturers are here okay we all are here for each other all right so please do come and join us at least you get to see others besides listening to the academic um you know aspect of the talks and so on and so forth yeah so for this semester the center has um plan for a talk to take place once in every two weeks or three weeks yeah so that we get to meet regularly so that helps to keep the momentum of your writing, the momentum of, of your research going. Okay, you see all your comrades here. These are all your friends. They are all on the same boat. We are all on the same boat, okay? So please do join us. Um, uh, Mr. Mahendra yeah, from um, Nepal just now was asking about Mendeley. It's really good. I also use Mendeley when I did my PhD thesis. It was really very helpful. And we have a person who's really good at it, Dr. Gunush. Yeah? She'll be sharing with us how to use uh, this reference system 
so that you can keep track of your uh, references while you are writing. You can have the in-text citation and at the same time you can have the list of uh, reference uh, references at the back of your thesis. Yeah, so um, we're going to have a number of talks. We're going to have postgraduate colloquium happening in January. We're going to have visiting professors during uh, the colloquium. They're going to be talking about interesting topics, problem statements, uh, different methodology. And we are going to have our alumnus yeah, who has passed uh, his PhD with GOT, graduate on time in three years. Yeah? So we're going to have this new doctor coming and joining his um, experience. Yeah? And we are also going to have lecturers talking about graduate on time as well. We're going to have three members um, who make the panel for the talk. Interesting, interesting. Interessant, yeah? So please do join us. Yeah, you need these guys. We need this also. I need this. I want to see all my students here. You know, when I see we have about 70 plus participants today, I'm so happy. During this COVID-19 pandemic, yeah, it can be a little lonely. It can be, oh my goodness, where am I going? Yeah, some students are away from us, those in Nepal, those in China, those in Oman, those in, in, in um, UAE. Yeah, you may be away from us in terms of distance, guys, but you are always close to us. All right, so please stay close. All right, keep the momentum going. Okay, you are there, you are going to make it, and here we are going to support you. Yeah, throughout your journey. All right. Okay. So uh, before we end the session, please make sure that you um, fill out the attendance list. Okay. Because we need to capture your email address. We need, uh, we want to share the materials. Yeah. Some of the students cannot make it today because it's 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the country. Okay. Right. Uh, so I have recorded the session so that we can share the link. You can have both uh, the recorded session and also the materials from our kind and generous uh, Dr. Alia for you to refer to. All right. When you do your writing. All right. Okay. So once again, thank you. Thank you so much to Dr. Alia. Thank you so much to our professors. Yeah. Who make the time here. Our lecturers. Yeah. Our head of postgraduate program, Dr. Tadiwa, for your feedback. Yeah. I see Dr. Juliana. I see Miss Nalina. Yeah. I see uh, Miss Vicky. Yeah. Of course, Prof. Farida and just now Prof. Uh, Maziha. Yeah. And also our professors yeah, from Nepal. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. So guys, take care. Stay safe. All right. Uh, we will see each other again in two weeks' time. Wait for my announcement. Yeah. And uh, We'll see each other again. Okay, take care, guys. All right, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.